another interesting kind of relationship that happens in communities is amensialism. Now, that's when an organism hurts another one, but doesn't really get anything out of it. So it's not really parasitism where one is hurting and the other one is being helped. You know, it's more like it's negative for someone and neutral for the other. Kind of like the commensalism was positive and neutral, this is negative and neutral. A good example is when elephants are trying to get to the plants they actually like to eat, and just because the other ones happen to be in the way, they trample over a tree. Now what they're doing there is they're killing the tree, which is on that area, and by the way, elephants, because they do this, they change the ecosystem. They're, they're what we call a keystone species. We'll talk a little bit more about that with the ecosystems, and we did mention it as we talk about ecology. And the fact is that elephants are part of the reason why savannas stay savannas. Because as they try to get to the, to the places that they want, they end up knocking down trees. And so that keeps the things as a grassland instead of a dry forest. Very interesting. But that means that for the tree, that was a negative interaction. But for the elephant, it's not really positive. He's not getting anything out of knocking down the tree. If it was because of him, he would prefer not even to have to do it. You just happen to be in my way. My bad. Now, some trees will end up uh, developing thorns to protect themselves from the elephants, and then it becomes competition, where both are competing for the space, kind of, you know? Now, speaking of competition, another kind of interaction that happens in the environment is an interaction where both animals hurt each other. And the most common type of that interaction is... Competition. And here you see several examples of competition. For example, in a herd, you're going to compete for the best grass, for the best position, away from predators. All of these things are examples of competition. Uh, you, and predators also compete with each other for, for prey, for the food that they have to eat. Animals often compete for mates. So they have like these shows of you know, gallantry and aggression in order to compete for mates. And Plants even compete for sunlight. The fast one, fastest one to grow when he reach the sunlight will block the sunlight for the other ones which are below it. Fish compete for the best food or the best position to avoid predators. Prey and predator compete in order to see who's going to eat or who's going to survive. Am I going to run away? Are you going to catch me? So competition is a constant part of life. And competition tasks both organisms. Both organisms waste energy trying to compete and trying to survive. And there's a lot of things that animals compete for. They compete for resources and nutrients. Nutrients are things they need to survive, like the plants uh, compete for sunlight or carbon dioxide. And resources are things that animals use to survive, are not necessarily uh, nest for survival, like the best position inside of a herd or the best shelter or something like that. All right? So competition is definitely a major part of life. But sometimes organisms actually help each other but not necessarily in the same way that they help each other doing a symbiotic relationship. Remember, a symbiotic relationship would be when they are so intertwined that one truly depends on the other. It could be both depending on each other, one depending on the other, or one actually preying kind of as a parasite to the other. Facilitation, which is what I'm going to talk about next, is more like when you don't really need the other, but it is kind of nice to have it. So. For example, there are a lot of flowers which can actually pollinate without the help of pollinators, but, you know, it's kind of nice to have it. In, in salt marshes, the juncus, which you can see in the foreground, grows and helps this, the marsh a lot. Notice that if the juncus is present, the number of other plant species increases. Without the juncus, the less biodiversity is present in the ecosystem. It's what we call a foundation species or engineer, ecosystem engineer. The thing about the junk is, is that it helps the environment by slowing down the, the water on the marshes and also by helping remove some of the salt from the ecosystem so that other plants which are less likely to deal with that can do better on the ecosystem because of that. And there's also other reasons including nutrient recycling and a lot of things like that in which it helps. So the idea here is that without it, you would have a different kind of ecosystem. So with it, it makes a complete difference. So what the, what's happening there is that jungles is facilitating the presence of other plants in the ecosystem. Something similar happens during succession, which is when the ecosystem is recovering after a disaster or when it's first starting. Sometimes the first species to come through, like a lichen or a moss, they facilitate life for the next species because they are the ones which are actually going to create the nutrients for the soil as they die off and gather on the ground. They are the ones that are going to break down the ground and help the erosion of the ground. So the first species to colonize a new ecosystem facilitate that for the new species which are coming after. Just like the juncus facilitates 
on the salt marsh the coming of new species because it makes the ecosystem more viable for them. So facilitation is when a, a species helps the other, uh, not really because it's trying to, but because its presence actually facilitates the other aspects that the other species actually needs. It creates more niches almost. So that's why we call them a foundation species very very often because they actually engineer the conditions from which other species can actually live in the ecosystem. So there are many kinds of relationships in ecology and no matter which one you look at, remember there's always animals, there's always organisms talking to each other. And in ways that go beyond just feeding on each other, they also compete with each other, they sometimes rely on each other, and sometimes they help each other, and yes, sometimes they do eat each other. But there's a lot of different relationships that exist between living things in an ecosystem, and to truly understand the way the ecosystem works, you have to look at those relationships.